HKM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Happy New Year's and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy here to get you up to date with everything Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Board of Selectmen further discuss the Fire Chief position. We have Hiller's sports highlights from games to close out December. And HCAM News stopped by the monthly Veterans Breakfast at the Senior Center. But first, the Board of Selectmen honored the latest town retirees with very nice gifts and acknowledged the many years and contributions each retiree made to the town. This year's retiring class will be hard to replace as it features four longtime Hopkinton Town employees, Fire Chief Ken Clark, P Police Lieutenant Chuck Wallace, Town Clerk Jerry Holland, and Town Treasurer Maureen Duenell. I was blessed to work for the best community in the country from day one. Never wanted to go anywhere else. Never wanted to go to the city. Had a chance to go there once, didn't want to go there. Uh, Chief Stewart was instrumental in opening up those avenues, and he said, what do you want to do, I'll help you? I said, oh, I'm a Hopkinton boy, I want to stay here. And I used to say, sometimes when you cut me, I bleed green. So it's like, uh, it's been installed in me from an early age, the team aspect, through the sports in high school. Uh, and I was able to, in, to be involved with the best team in the world, you know what I mean? When, if anything that goes on, there isn't any other people in town that I would rather do anything that we had to deal with here, whether it be in someone's home, at a fire, on the highways, and, uh, and they always brought their A games and made me proud and hopefully made the community proud of the job that we do and uh, what we try to do each and every day out in the street. And to be brief, thank you very much. It's like uh, been a great run. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to uh, say it's an honor to uh, follow uh, Chief Clark. Um, he's been one of my great mentors over the years. I've been here in Washington, so hey, thank you very much. I'm trying to put a few words together, and there's only two words that, uh, that come to my mind. I, as you all know, I probably have a lot of words, but the two uh, foremost are uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you to my family. Um, I'm sure a lot of people can tell you it's tough being married to a cop. You know. Um, you miss a lot of uh, events in their family, and hopefully now that I'm going to re be retiring shortly, I can uh, make up those, uh, those missed times. I also want to thank the Board of Selectmen and, and all the townspeople. Um, I came here 30 years ago, and uh, I was still kind of green. Um, I was here for about 15 minutes, and I said, I'm going to make a home here. Um, you know, I was honored and blessed to be uh, working with some great members of the police department who are true friends of mine. They were great mentors. They helped me uh, come uh, grow up from a, uh, a free auxiliary police officer in the uh, late 70s all the way up to uh, interim police chief. Uh, without those great members uh, or mentors and supporters, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I want to thank the Board of Selectmen, all my friends and family on the blue team, as well as all the community people that have stood by me and supported me over the years. So again, thank you to all of you. I appreciate it. First of all, I want to thank the selectmen for all their kind words. And I'd like to thank the community for allowing me to serve them for the 26 years, eight months, and eight days. <laughs> I've had a great ride. I've been involved very much with the community. My heart is always with Hopkinton. Born and brought up here, and especially to the community and the people that I've worked with over the years. They've been great. Couldn't do it without them. And I'm going to miss it. And I want to thank you. Thank the Board of Selectmen. Thank Norman, Maria, and the community, and all my friends here tonight. Thank you. It's true, like as Maureen said, I 
it's the community that I love, and I'll always want to serve the community any, any way that I can. And yeah, I spent most of my tenure with the Board of Selectmen, and I served under every single person here except for John. You were, but you were the other day I got from the housewife, so that was really cool. Um, and Mr. Kamalo, uh, it's been a pleasure working with you, and I'm glad to see you. I remember being here in this room when you were interviewed, and um, you were definitely my number one choice, just to know. Yeah. Uh, I, H. Cam, I love you guys. Uh, everybody here, I think, I just to know just about everyone here, I, the police department, wicked awesome in working with them through the years. Uh, fire department and uh, DPW, actually. Um, Sarah from the Independent. I, um, I, you know, you hate missing anybody. And there's people out here in the hall. I love all of you. I will see you on the trail. I'm going to build a big nest, and we're all going to nest in there, and we're going to have fun. Take a nap when we need you, okay? And Bob, thank you so much for all your support, Joe. So, thank you. I appreciate this greatly. I'll see you around. The selectman meeting was packed by many who wanted to be there for the retiring longtime town employees, but the meeting was also packed with many residents who wanted to share their views on the latest development and the search for a permanent fire chief. In December, current Framingham Fire Chief Gary Doherty, who was one of the two final candidates for the Hopkinton Fire Chief position to replace Chief Ken Clark, who retired beginning in 2016, dropped his candidacy from the position just prior to the selectman meeting on December 15th. The selectman chose to make the other final candidate, Hopkinton Deputy Chief Stephen Slammon, interim chief, and start another search to seek additional candidates. At the beginning of the January 5th Selectman meeting, many residents stepped up to the podium to urge the board to make Stephen Slammon the permanent chief and expressed disapproval of the Selectman's choice to open the search back up for further candidates. I'd like to say I'm in support of Steve Slammon to be permanent chief. Uh, like Chief Clark had said, uh, the Hopkins Fire Department, you can put him with anybody in the state and uh, I'll back that up with him any time <clears throat> so I definitely think you should make that choice tonight to make him a permanent chief there's no reason not to after the public forum the selectmen discussed the fire chief position extensively and came up with three possible choices regarding selecting the permanent chief see fundamentally three choices we can say we're done take the interim chief make him the full chief we can kick the can down the road and um, and revisit this in three months after the interim you know, chief's had a chance to run things for a while. Or we can just say, we've already bought this, <laughs> right? We might as well just go and see what, what, what surfaces. I mean, essentially, right? It's right, start a search, see who shows up, and then, and then reevaluate based upon the data. So those, those seem to be the three choices we should, we're circling around. Um, and I think as a board, we just, we should just decide on which one of those we want to pursue. I would just say that of those three options, I think options one and three, are are um, are the only options where we're not opening up the possibility of doing more damage. Okay. Um, and uh, and I think that um, you know my personal feeling, you know we we've had a, a, a good conversation with uh, Deputy Chief Acting Chief Slayman. Uh I think that. He knows where he stands with us. I hope it's clear that it's in a very positive light. Um, and I think that we should uh, go with option three and, you know, just really solidify uh, and, and create a stronger foundation underneath the decision. What it was was if we ended up with one candidate and that candidate wasn't a beloved member of the community that everybody came out and yelled at us about, and we were left with that one, and we had just said, okay. Then that community would have come out and said, how dare you guys just wait to the last person to come out? Mm -hmm. 
You know, and that's the part that, that I, you know, I didn't expect this, this barrage. I thought that we were doing the right thing. And I still think we're doing the right thing. That's what I was trying to get at. That's I still, still think thought. we're doing the right as much as 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 as, as much as, as as he's beloved by me. Um, that we we stick to this process because he just it, this this could have been a whole different position down <coughs> to one candidate and that candidate not <coughs> have that support. And we would have been looked at just as damningly, and and it's and it's it's hard for me. It's it's friends, family, and everything. Now I'm not invited to houses and stuff now because of this, <laughs> and it's not easy. And it's and it's and I'm not, I don't take it lightly. In the end, the board directed the town manager and director of human resources to repost the position. The board will investigate scheduling an assessment center for the interim fire chief prior to March 31st and to evaluate new applicants for the fire chief and decide whether to continue the search prior to the March 31st deadline of Stephen Slammon's interim chief contract. Coming up next on HCAM News, we will get you up to date with everything Hiller Sports, Courtney has our HCAM Insider, and much more. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss it. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. We are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the HCAM studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend 1. To learn a Girl Scout Troop. And 2. Visiting HCAM to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. While many were on a holiday break, many Hopkinton Hillers teams were still in action, such as Hillers Varsity Hockey, who ended the month on a red-hot winning streak. Back on December 16th, the 1-0 Hopkinton Hillers Varsity Hockey team played their second game of the season against Dover Sherborne, and things went rather well. Well for the Hillers, Zach Morgan, and there's a goal. The Hillers score, it went deflected in. J.H. Vokey started things off with a goal for the Hillers. He avoids a check, and now he's going to get out of the zone. He throws it up the side to, to Coveney. Coveney takes a wide slap shot. Oh, it hits on the mask of the goaltender, Colangelo. After the J.H. Vokey goal, both goaltenders exchanged great saves. Breaking in is Condon. Condon shot and a save by O'Leary. Backhanded shot is another save by O'Leary, and he covers it. But then the Hillers scoring started. Can lay some place to Vokey. Shot and a goal! J.H. Vokey picks up the second goal for Hopkinton on a nice pass by Finlayson. And the Hillers take a 2 to nothing lead. Yes, throws it back to the point, and it's intercepted. Here's Finlayson with speed. He's by himself. He makes a move, and it's a shot, and it's a save. I think Colangelo got a piece of that. It's loose in front. Here's Finlayson, and a shot, and a goal. Finlayson passed it in front to Abbott. It was a nice, soft pass, and Abbott tucked it home for the goal. It's 3-1. Hillers, and now the break in his Bokey. He's got a goal already tonight. T passes it to himself. There's another shot and a goal. Bokey has another. But not out. Here's Linkers. Oh, nice pass and a backhand goal by Owen Delaney from Eric Linquist. The Hillers grab the five to two win as J.H. Bokey nets two goals. Matt Linquist, Will Abbott, and Owen Delaney had a goal apiece. After a tough loss to Medfield on the road December 19th, the Hillers took their frustrations out on Norton back on December 23rd. That's goes wide now, it's a wide open net and it is in. Finlayson. Cam Finlayson takes a puck that was hard off the backboard 
and jams it home, and the Hillers take a 1-0 lead. To the center ice it goes. Simos across ice. Here comes Abbott. Abbott tries to avoid his man. He does. He throws in front. Dip and try. And it's a goal. Now Kobe squares up shot, and it's blocked in front. There's another shot, and it's in. From the circle, it's Billy oh, yeah. Allen. And the Hillers take a 3-0 lead. It's McCluskey. Temple. Back to the point. Slap shot. It's blocked in front by... And there's a shot and a goal. A roof shot backhander by Nick Temple. And the Hillers take a 4-0 lead. Simos takes a shot and it goes in. He roofs it over the goaltender. And it goes off the post and in. Chipping it. He has it. Linquist, nice pass. Oh, he has a man. A shot and a goal. Owen Delaney, Owen Delaney with a goal. The Hillers knock off Norton 6 to nothing as sophomore goaltender Dylan O'Leary pitches his first shutout. Cam Finlayson contributed with a pair of goals as the Hillers improved to 3 and 1 on the season. The Hillers got wins in their next three games, taking down Lunenburg, Fitchburg, and Holliston. They stood at 6 and 1 entering this week. On December 18th, the 0 and 1 Hillers boys basketball team took on Millis. Zach Sasitsky hits this three to put the Hillers up by seven in the second quarter. Hillers went into the halftime locker room up 31-24. Start of the third quarter, Jack Vacari finds Austin Odell, goes off the glass and in. The Hillers went on a 10-0 run to start the third, and they never look back, getting a 64-52 victory over Millis. The 1-1 Hillers boys then took on Medway December 21st. Second quarter, some sweet passing. Finds Nick Canal at the low block, and he goes in for the deuce. The Hillers went into the halftime locker room up 36-29. Third quarter, Zach Sasitsky feeling it from three-point land. The Hillers maintained control and took the game 65-55. Nick Canal came up huge with 29 points in the victory. The Hillers boys dropped a pair during the holiday break and stood at 2-3 and three overall coming into this week. The girls team played Medway prior to the boys, 35-35 in the third, and Sarah DePillo changes that with this three. DePillo tallied 27 points for the Mustangs as Medway handed Hopkinton their first loss of the season, 60-53. The Hillers girls stood at 3-1 and one after the loss. You can check out full Hillers sports broadcasts and more highlights on our website, hcam.tv, or by heading over to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash hcamtv. During the first Friday of every month, Local veterans get together at the Hopkinton Senior Center to have breakfast, socialize, and recall memories. At the December breakfast, Senior Center volunteer Ronnie Billado told us about the tradition of the missing comrades table set up for each breakfast and tribute was paid to Navy veteran Ken McDonald, who recently passed away at the age of 73. During the first Friday of every month, local veterans get together at the Hopkinton Senior Center to have breakfast, socialize, and recall memories. At each gathering, a table is set up at the entrance to honor missing comrades and prisoners of war. The table is set with a white tablecloth, a black napkin, a white candle, and a plate with only a slice of lemon and salt with an empty chair leaning against the table. Every uh, month for the veterans breakfast, yes. you set up this uh, I set up the table, table. And the, um, the listing there explains everything on the table. The candle, the salt, the lemon, a white plate, a black napkin. And it's always a white tablecloth. And the chair is always put to the side tilted because somebody's missing. I learned about this when I first came to the Senior Center. Never knew about it before, but I'm glad I do. The veterans, when they come in, if this table is not set up, where's the table for the missing guy? So they do ask. So I make sure it's here every month at the veterans breakfast. 
The tradition was started by a group of fighter pilots who flew in Vietnam known as the Red River Valley Fighter Pilots Association, also known to some as the River Rats of Vietnam. Other branches of the military soon picked up on the tradition of setting a remembrance table when units or commands gather for dinner and reunions. At the December breakfast, event organizer Henry Alessio talked about Navy veteran Ken McDonald, who was tragically killed two days before Thanksgiving after being struck by a car in Natick. And his home away from home in the early, mid-60s was the destroyer USS Pritchett, hull number DD-561. It was a Long Beach boat that alternated between there and the Western Pacific, in other words, the Vietnam coast. And starting in August 1964, the deployment was extended and uh, went to the Tonkin Gulf. And we all know what that is or was. In his spare time, along with Art Brooks, uh, they reconstructed you, you may not notice, but as you come in the senior center, up on the wall, there's a cane, and it's a, a Boston Post cane. And uh, 75 or 100 years ago, a newspaper started the effort of giving a cane to several dozen towns and the oldest resident in that town. Well, our cane got beat up over time, and Ken and Art uh, redid the knob on the top of the cane and switched gold. And they got into it, and they were molding some gold, and found that it was a more challenging effort than they thought, and they had to put a lot of personal funds into getting that cane redone. And they made a duplicate cane, or two. So now, the oldest resident gets a duplicate, the untrained eye can't tell the difference. I think it's brass. Uh, so we don't lose that gold cane. But they put an awful lot of effort into that. And also, Ken gave considerable help to John Palmer to resurface the bochi cord out there. And John, if you, if you see him, he was very, very appreciative of what uh, Ken did. And what strikes me is here is a comrade and he and I used to sit over there that I bet half of us in the room don't even know or didn't know. And even if you did know him, you probably didn't know all the stuff that he did. He was just going around helping, helping, helping. He really had a life driven by good works. Ken's neighbor, Bob Latender, recalled memories of Ken. Neighbor, next door neighbor. Known him for 30 years. And quite a friend, we used to uh, chum around a lot and do projects together around the houses. If he needed something, he would come over and borrow from me, and I borrowed from him whatever he needed. Uh, just this last fall, I let him borrow my rototiller, which is in his garage right now, and uh, he was landscaping his land, tilling it up and everything, and uh, we're gonna finish that project. He only did a uh, 12 by 30 foot area, put seed in, it was a little late on the seed, but uh, it's gonna thrive this spring. He's gonna get out there and, and landscape his land farm and finish it up. But he's certainly gonna be missed, you know, for 30 years, and uh, great fellow. To hear more about Ken McDonald or more about this story, head over to our website, hcam.tv. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels to start off the new year. Here is Courtney with our HCAM Insider to tell you what to expect. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, January 9th at 12 p.m., it's Swimming and Diving versus Norwell. At 2 p.m., it's Swimming and Diving versus Foxborough. At 4.30 p.m., the Hillers take on the Panthers in Ice Hockey versus Holliston. And at 6 p.m., it's Swimming and Diving versus Medfield. 
On Monday, January 11th at 6.30 p.m., the girls' basketball game versus Bellingham will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, January 13th at 7 p.m., Patino Vasquez shares original music and his passion for turning found objects into art on a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. The musicians are gathered around you, everything is gonna be fine. In the aftermath, we pick up the pieces, gather all the fruits for the wine. On Thursday, January 14th at 7 p.m., the effects that allergens and other environmental stressors have on the body will be discussed in the last of the Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series, live on HCAM TV. On Sunday, January 17th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from January 11th will air. If you want to know what else is coming your way for HCAM programming in 2016, just visit hcam.tv slash newsupdates where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. You can also sign up for our daily news updates to keep up with current events. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and I hope your 2016 is a great one. smile.